Do you really need to set goals? I mean, come on, kind of old school to write your goals on the bathroom mirror, wake up every morning, give yourself that motivational pep talk you need to conquer the world. Hey, just because something's old school doesn't mean it can't work. I don't think that having goals is overrated. I think that it's a useful practice that most athletes should follow. If you're working with a coach, you should probably talk to that coach about what goals you have in mind. I know guys who write down their goals every single week and review those goals week to week to week. I even tried it for a little bit. The trick is the ones that stay on the list, I would just do a top 10 list. The ones that stay week to week are the ones that are highest priority. But then I know guys who don't don't have goals at all. At least they don't write them down on pen and paper. So I'm going to be completely honest right now. I'm, I, I, I could be leaving performance on the table. I fully admit that. I haven't done enough research into goal setting to know. Uh, but I don't, I mean, I'm the kind of athlete that Drew hates that doesn't really set goal, concrete goals at the start of the season at all. But I would argue that even them setting races on the calendar and setting a races on the calendar is their way of writing down or creating goals for themselves. I make the athletes that I work with come up with very specific and clear goals because if their goals aren't clear, my job isn't clear. I mean, fundamentally, the job of a coach is to help the athlete accomplish their goals. So if they don't have any goals or if they haven't figured out spe specifics about their goals, my job is like, well, well, like, what are we doing here? To give you an analogy, every time you get in your car, you know where you're going and then you figure out how to get there. The same is true for cycling. We don't just get on our bike and start doing the process without knowing where we're headed. We need to know what our final destination is so that we can figure out the process or the route to get there. Talking about this direction in his book, What's Best Next, Matt Perman writes, knowing where we are headed gives us the confidence and direction to live as we ought to live. And I like that. I like that quote a lot. If someone comes to me and says they just want to get better, everybody wants to get better. Come on, that's not good enough. You need to come up with something that you can picture, something that you can see and smell and taste. Like, just get better isn't going to get you out of bed on those early morning workouts. It's not going to get you out the door when the weather is super crummy. You got to have a better picture in mind that's going to motivate you more than just, just get better. I mean, I don't want to end up at the end of the season and having thinking, if you set your goal of just get better, we could shrug our shoulders and say, what, like, did we do it? And I wouldn't know. Like, everybody gets better in some aspects, right? Like, even if your FTP drops, you probably got better at something. So just get better isn't good. But if you've got a goal that's crystal clear, you can, at the end of the season, look at it and say, I did or I did not do this. I either succeeded or I failed. It was that clear. When we set goals, what we're doing is we're raising the stakes, when you set a goal, there's a chance you could fail at acquiring that goal. And I think this is important. We, we need to have stakes in our lives. When there are stakes, it means there's something that we could lose and it's important and that motivates us. Matt Fitzgerald even writes that when we set goals, it raises the stakes to such a sense that it's a life or death scenario or it helps us to break into this life-saving performance. Exactly what he says on page 164 of Brain Training with Runners <laughs> is that setting race goals and particularly peak race goals is one way to increase the importance of race so that you are capable of achieving something closer to life-saving performance. To break it down, what he means is that as something becomes more important to us, it also improves our performance. When there are things at stake, important things at stake, it increases our capacity to suffer, and anything that increases our capacity to suffer also increases performance. So, it's like a bear chasing you. If a bear is chasing you, there's a lot on the line. I mean, literally, your life is at stake. So if you fail, the bear eats you. That raises the stakes and you're going to set some PRs with that bear chasing you. Setting goals does the same thing. Raises the stakes, raises your capacity to suffer, and increases performance. If you're liking the video so far, finding this content helpful, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more cycling related content like this one.
To get the most out of your goals, here are some things to keep in mind when setting those goals. Number one, clarity. Your goals need to be crystal clear. You need to be able to see them in your mind. You need to be able to picture them on any given day. At the end of the season, you need to be able to say, I accomplished this or I didn't accomplish this. Vague goals just don't cut it. You don't want to get to the end of the season, shrug your shoulders because a vague goal, you like, you don't know if it happened or didn't happen. Number two, difficulty. You need to set hard goals. I mean, come on, don't be a wuss. Don't just set easy goals so that when you accomplish them, you feel pretty good about yourself. You need to set really hard goals so that if you accomplish those goals, you feel really good about yourself and you felt like you actually did something. A couple years ago, I made this chart that shows that as goal difficulty increases, motivation also increases. But there's a spot at which it plummets. It just goes whop. And that is when you get into the realm of, or when you get outside the realm of reality. The realm of reality says this is possible. Go beyond possibility, going into the impossible, and motivation plummets because now your goals are so difficult that you can't even see yourself achieving them and motivation plummets. You have to actually believe in the goals that you're setting and believe that they're actually doable. So the sweet spot is at the highest part of the peak right before the, right before the drop off, which means these goals are possible but difficult. You might could accomplish these goals. It's gonna take a lot of commitment, dedication, hard work, everything. You might even fail. And if you fail, I would make the argument that you're better off because of it if you had set an easy goal because you might have actually hit a higher level of performance having set really hard goals versus setting really easy accomplishable goals. And the third big thing that I'd say that you need when you're setting good goals is feedback. You need to know if you're on the right track. When you set those big goals that aren't for months down the road, you need to have some stepping stones along the way that let you know you're on the right path. This could come in the form of power testing or even just target workouts. A lot of times this is going to be conversations that you have with your coach one-on-one -on -one about, am I getting closer to accomplishing this goal? My dog took a huge dump in the backyard this morning, and that's exactly what your performance tonight reminds me of. Goals is a really big topic, and I could keep going on and on, but I'm going to wrap it up there. In the next video, I'm going to share with you my 2024 goals and a little bit of the training that I plan to implement to get there. If you've got big goals for 2024, I'm curious. What are they? What are your big goals for 2024? Let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.